Well, hey there and good morning. Thank you for joining in for the second in the series. I uh, started off yesterday with resume renovation. Today, we're going to be doing building your career brand with LinkedIn, and we're going to teach you how to use it for your job search. And tomorrow, we're going to give you all the secrets to teach them how to select you in the interview process with interview intervention. Three more coming next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Check out the full calendar over at selfrecruiter.com. Now, let me just get my slides up here so we can begin to move forward a little bit. Well, this series is about you taking control. So as much as I'm giving you very strong advice and every piece of the advice is my opinion, um, you need to take it with a grain of salt, maybe pitch it over your shoulder for a little bit of luck, and you need to use the right parts to help you move forward, depending on what your challenges are. Let me just see if I can adjust this a little bit more. There we go, even better. Uh, check out the full schedule over at selfrecruiter.com. Join in anytime. You can also watch on replay. Uh, I know this is awfully early for those folks on the uh, West Coast, but uh, gosh, don't I know they get up awfully early. This is building your career brand with LinkedIn and how to use it for your job search. We'll teach you both components, but it begins with one thing, this concept of you as a product. And in today's world, you know, it used to be okay just to exist on the resume. They'd look on the resume, they go, hmm, looks pretty nice, looks pretty nice. But in today's world, the, if you make the good stack of resumes, the first thing they're going to do is grab your name, take it over to LinkedIn, and let's have another look. Does it look similar over here? Does it look even more enticing over here? Does it look less? Does the person not exist? Have to exist in the, re in the digital world, in the modern world. Otherwise, you don't exist. Now, if we're going to be uh, existing and uh, catch notice, catch attention, that also means we have to be interesting. You have to share a little bit about what drives you or what makes you tick, whether that aligns with what you do professionally or whether that's something outside. You have to sell the whole you, and we'll show you how to balance that so it doesn't become something like a Facebook. This is an important part of how you take control of the discussion all about you, you know, what they say about you. This is how you influence those other people to begin saying, hopefully really nice things behind the scenes about you. Now for clarity, because both of these are marketing documents, yesterday we talked about resume, today we'll talk about LinkedIn. Resume, in my view, is about catching or peaking that interest, tends to be the, the first point of contact, not always, not always, sometimes it's a great LinkedIn profile, tends to be the first point of contact. So on the resume, it's the essence and value of your career, not, not, not the whole story, everything else that doesn't work. Check out my re resume renovation lecture. But LinkedIn is something very, very different. LinkedIn is the de facto social networking website for our work life, just like Facebook, but this one is for career. And we really don't have an option of not participating in it if you'd like to be hired. Very difficult to have any credibility professionally, no matter what you do or what field you're in, if you don't have a LinkedIn profile and it doesn't properly support you. Now, LinkedIn is a few other things beyond that basic descriptor. It's this communications, research, marketing, advertising platform. Business person thinks of LinkedIn this person this way every time. You need to think of LinkedIn this way every time. You have a career brand to manage forevermore. Let me connect those dots for you. We're not in a world where we're going to have one more job. You're going to have one more job, and then you're going to have one more job, and then you're going to have one more job. That's the world we live in. The sooner you begin to manage your career branding and everything around that that sets, elevates, stages, and lights your career and utilizes these factors on LinkedIn, the better the outcome. The more doors, the more opportunity will open for you. And you'll also notice when you go into an interview, which we'll be talking about tomorrow, when you go into that interview, you'll realize that the conversation is quite different because you didn't have to spend 30, 40% of the time establishing your credibility. That is what LinkedIn is for. So let's really build out a three-dimensional sales brochure, all about us driving the reader to a singular conclusion. Oh my gosh, if I work with this person, hire this person, put this person on the project, best business decision I'll make today. Now, what you're seeing on screen here is a little bit of a visual of the LinkedIn network. It's a three-level network. You know, so when I connect to this happy person in the corner, no matter what they do to their settings, every one of their connections are in John's pool, not John's connections, but they're in John's pool, separate concept. And no matter what those folks do to their settings, every one of their 
connections are also in John's pool, not John's connections, but they're in my pool. That's a searchable pool of information that I own every piece of. So you might want to think about the influence power of this pool and beginning to do a share strategy. Now, next week, really a part two to this lecture is called career evolution, preparing for your career's next leap with social media marketing. That lecture is really 60 minutes all about once you've built the right LinkedIn profile to showcase yourself, but that's really no different than a brochure at a hotel sitting over in the rack on top of that machine. You're going to let it get dusty. Or you're going to get that brochure in front of people. The career evolution lecture teaches you how to put together a social media marketing campaign for yourself that you can manage in just two minutes per day. Hopefully you check out that uh, session next week, piggybacking on everything from today. In case you haven't seen me before, John Krant, author, career coach, and speaker, resume and LinkedIn guru as well. So if you are suffering like most are from very poor storytelling for your career across your resume, across your LinkedIn profile, maybe even how you, you, you say it in those meetings, those interviews that you get, um, work with someone that can help you fix those issues. All my services are over on the self recruiter website under the services tab. And if you need to know, uh, um, if you need to talk a little bit before you know which package is really right for you, send me a quick email. We'll set up a time to talk a little bit more about my background coming up. My book will help you. We'll leave that to Amazon and my website. You can, it's a great roadmap to help you through everything. If you want your own self-guided tour, how to manage your career, how to manage the process of job search, everything else, how to renegotiate wrong offers, all that kind of stuff is in there. Another thing that will help you is a different version of today's lecture. This version of today's lecture, well, you're watching this version, this version on screen you're seeing here separately is a special version that's on my self-recruiter website. It's free. It's about halfway down the page. And it's one where you can see me large or the slides large. And really you can use it as a start and stop tutorial in a much easier way as you build out a better LinkedIn profile. Check that out. While you're on my LinkedIn, check out my articles. It will help back onto all the things I teach you in this lecture series. Let's jump in. Don't let somebody else think for yourself as I'm standing here telling you what to think. <laughs> that has to go in and go through your own filter. Um, you have to decide. You have to put down that smart device, put down that tablet, get out of the back seat, get behind the wheel, or you're not likely to get to the destination that you're thinking about. So uh, yeah, we have to be the, our own strategy maven as well. Today's lecture is really about how we move our, our brand into the digital world. And while today I'm really talking about LinkedIn, it's, it's the whole digital world we have to consider. Uh, so yes, Twitter, Instagram, all these other things might factor into it. I would say the typical job seeker or the typical person managing their career, if we're not really looking for an active job right now, can probably manage two, three, four social media platforms for career. This is not getting wound up in all of that, losing all of your time. This is just a few short minutes per day to just keep tweaking, keep the momentum for your career moving forward. So whatever I teach you about LinkedIn today, you need to apply that to the two or three other platforms you may be using because it's the same logic. Now, let's get to the real question right here. Why does social media matter? Especially in light of all the nonsense in the world going on. Well, small changes change perception. Uh, that nonsense in the world came from small changes changing perception in a, I might say, a bad way. Um, but we can we can understand this effect on humanity and we can leverage this for ourselves. We have to be on social media because it's where the people are. We can leverage that energy. You get people talking about you. It's like, oh, it's like starting a wildfire. Look at that second from the bottom. I don't need to read every one of these things here, but Proper use of social media, and in my my view, that's two, three minutes per day. You can stay on top of people's mind over time with seemingly no contact. There's a lot of power in social media simply by sharing the right things. That's why the part two to this lecture next week, Career Evolution, all about what to share is so important. Let's also think about why we're going to get hired, because that's why we're building a resume. That's why we're building a proper LinkedIn profile as a sales brochure Assuming we're capable and qualified, of course, that ha with, without question, that has to exist. As a hiring individual, I do not hire people because they are capable and qualified. <laughs> please, please don't mishear that. 
I wouldn't speak to anybody I didn't believe to be capable or qualified. That is not a determining factor in my view. That's a, a bare minimum to even have a discussion. The reason why I'm going to hire you is simple. Number one, above all other things, is chemistry, assuming you're capable and qualified. And number two, above all other things, then chemistry is confidence in you. Confidence. I don't, I don't even know what you're going to do for me yet, but I'm confident that if I hire you, I'm going to get something very special. I'm not necessarily going to get from just those cookie cutter, normal people. Inspire them. We'll teach you more of that in the interview lecture tomorrow. So back to the why you're going to get hired, the chemistry, the confidence, everything else. It's also about owning who you are, what makes you tick, what drives you. Um, giving yourself permission to be yourself. This is where I usually interject and, and remind people since I do so much on video today, uh, these days versus in person, I remind people that uh, in reality, no matter what you see here, John is actually shy and introverted, very shy and introverted. Um, and yet this is still what I do. And uh, I'm very, very good in person as well. So that shyness and introversion, though very, very real, does not prevent me from getting to my destiny. Um, you have to own and embody whoever you are, give yourself permission to get into those uncomfortable areas. And that means also sharing some of the story about who you are, what makes you tick, what drives you, what excites you. This is the story, even if it doesn't align professionally with what you do, that makes you interesting. Of course, be capable and qualified. That, that's a bare minimum. And we have to illustrate that. But don't forget the two major pieces. So I want to share with you just a few things that are off of my Instagram. I feel my Instagram is so important. It's actually a drop down menu on my website. You know, drop down menu on the website usually indicates, oh, this person thinks it's important. And yet you'll see there's absolutely nothing on my Instagram that has anything to do with what I do professionally. Why is it here? Because when you hire or when you buy or when you engage an individual, that's a purchase decision. And so you'd want to know what makes them tick, what drives them, what's their energy, what do they love to do, what do they have passion for? So that's how I use my Instagram is to tell the non-professional story of who John is. I have lots to tell a professional story of who John is. And so they also see what's a little bit of my drive and energy. And by the way, two and a half years ago in the California desert, almost died at 108 degrees, which was not funny at all. <laughs> it's about an hour on top of the plateau, take, taking, taking a wrong turn in that sunlight, which added about two extra miles. And, and boy, my, my heart rate was above 180 for a full hour, stopping every few feet, trying to make it back. And I didn't think I was going to make it back, but very glad I did. Uh, and <laughs> didn't end up out there like so many other folks. Small changes change perception. Now you have a different perception of me from seeing that. So you, you want to think about how your little bit of storytelling changes everything. And again, you're the one that decides things, not somebody else, because you're the one that has to take control of the discussion and guide people. Now, in reinventing our LinkedIn profile, just as we had to do with our resume, we're going to have to go through a paradigm shift. That means a paradigm. This isn't a little bit of paint, a little bit of wallpaper, a little bit of decorative. No, no. This is breaking down to the studs and reinventing, going through a metamorphosis because it's our job to teach them how to select us as the very best individual. And it can start right with our LinkedIn profile. Now, LinkedIn's an enormous piece of our personal branding, as is what we decide to wear that day. <clears throat> as I choke on my coffee. Choking on your coffee is not a great part of your personal branding, but everything else that we present is part of that. So, you know, I was out doing cardio earlier in some five-finger shoes and some tights and a, and a tank top on the waterfront. And, and if I showed up here, dress that way. I don't think you'd be listening to my advice. So you have to embody the product that's expected. In addition to being whoever you are as a person, that's part of the personal branding. And you have to carry that correct story across the resume, across the LinkedIn profile, and get it into your muscle memory in your mouth to begin to tell that story in a different way, because your job is to sell them and persuade them. Your job is not to answer questions, although you might use the device of a Q&A to sell them and present and, and persuade them and inspire them, hopefully. A little bit more clarity between these two devices. Resume is about catching or peaking the interest. LinkedIn is about closing the deal as, with you as the best individual for that role. Another way to think about it, 
resume is the essence and value of your career on a single sheet of paper. LinkedIn is the polar opposite. This three-dimensional sales brochure that drives them to a singular conclusion, which really works to your benefit. Then you have to back it up with what you say and how you greet them and everything else. Now, I know it's a LinkedIn lecture, but our LinkedIn URL should be over on our resume. So I like to really remind folks here what I also teach in the resume lecture in case you haven't seen it. And that is on your resume, your contact information should be a single line across that top, not pulling eye focus, not pulling attention. Let your story pull the attention. But you do want to set it up this way for all the reasons that are up on this slide that I don't have to read. All the things we want them to get to are easy to get to. Oh, let's get the fingers visible on both sides. You're either convinced, pick up that phone. If you're not quite convinced, click on that LinkedIn and my gosh, you'll be convinced right after that. Make sure your resume is guiding them right to your fuller sales brochure about you. You're going to have to deal with the fact that we've gone through a pandemic. Hopefully coming out the other side. <laughs> that doesn't mean it's instantly changed or better, but my gosh, everything is changed for sure. And it's changed in a way that might have taken decades uh, without the pandemic. It just took a, a number of months in the pandemic to, to have things change dramatically forever. Um, that change will continue for a while. And that means you have to be effective in a remote situation, even if you're going to work for a company that is on site. Much more important now to be able to be seen as a, a value in a remote distance. So if you haven't worked remotely, if that didn't you know, open up opportunity for you during the pandemic. Think about how you go back and tell your story of how you can be effective from a distance. Maybe it was the things you see up here with, with vendors or managers or, or team members or, or clients or partners that are off site, or maybe you did even speaking or teaching things or conference calls or webinars. All of that is a way to show remote work if you're not working remotely. LinkedIn's about networking, really interacting with other people sharing information, everything else. I like this second part here, this creating this pool of contacts that we could leverage to our benefit. Why do we have to do it the hard way? We could do it a much easier way. Now, traditional networking, uh, most people are like, when I'm doing an in-person session, I'll like, ah, who likes to network? And I'll, I'll throw it out to the audience and I'll get, I'll have 60, 70 people in the audience and three or four hands will go up. I like to network. I'm like, hmm. and I look around to the rest. I'm like, oh. How about the rest of you? And I go, did you notice who who else's hand was not up? <laughs> John's hand's not up because I'm actually shy and introverted no matter what it seems like. So do you think I enjoy networking? Of course not. <laughs> I am very good at it. You can overcome anything. That's simply technique networking if it's going to be effective. is It's about being the most interested person in the room. Oh, no, Jack, what brought you here today? Oh, no, how did you get into that? Oh, no, what's it like over at that company? Oh, no, out of curiosity, where'd you come from before that? Oh, no, Jill, do you know Jack? Oh, no, what do you do? What are you doing? You have to be that person, the connector. The e it's so easy to be that person who's not under pressure. There's only four, five, six questions. <laughs> They're not hard to remember. And then while all these other people are thinking, you're collecting information. That is what networking is. And when they run out of oxygen, they're going to turn to you and go, what about you, John? Like, well, since you've now all told me your story and I know you're really listening, then give them your great elevator pitch. That's a whole another thing. But we tend to go through that list and not very be not very happy because you know we we arrive there thinking, oh, I have to sell myself. You're there to collect information. You have to think more in unusual ways. When you get into networking, it's it's not as simple as just getting in the room. You know, sometimes that works, but most of the time it's just a rut. Your job is to seamlessly move, make connections, collect information for the future. Yes, I hope something happens at this networking meeting, but it's really for the future. Most people approach it with the wrong attitude, and that's why they end up in very unhappy places. Just change the equation by changing the rules. I'm there to interview other people. Oh, what do you do? Oh, how'd you get into that? Oh, I have to be just so curious. It's really that simple. A little more unusual, unconventional, unexpected, but it really works. It opens up unconventional thinking, and it connects those dots until you have moments of clarity. Now, back to LinkedIn. We're going to show you how to maximize the profiles, but we also have to think about the connections we build. So the first question I usually deal with from audiences is, well, whom should I connect with? Whom should I network with? Well, let's just give you the answer here. 
everyone. <laughs> I don't care if you're in India, Russia, China. I don't care if you're in janitorial services. None of it matters because it's never about you. Oh, my connections are all near and dear to my heart, near and dear to my heart, but it's never about my connections. It's about those two or three layers of network behind that I own forever. If I could be connected to every person on the planet, I certainly would just to collect, harvest, and utilize that information to make my journey easier, just like you need to make your career journey easier in all those steps. So every place you might be out uh, running into other folks, no matter where that is, could be in line at the movies or, or, or at the park or anywhere we might be, you're going to have to start carrying business cards again. Oh, yes, the world is coming back. We're going to have to trade those things again, and we're going to have to be ready to network almost anywhere. It's a game changer. To sum up the first part of the lecture, link with as many people as possible. None of it matters. None of it's about them. It's all about grabbing that network for yourself. Um, you know, I think I probably have about 12,000 connections, you know, public speaker, not that difficult for me. Get as many as you possibly can. My 12,000 give me millions and millions of people in my network that I can really utilize that information I see to deduce better pathways forward, to deduce better connections I should know, all of those things. Let's show you two techniques before we maximize the profiles. Now, these are two techniques that I used every day as a recruiter. I promised you a little more history on my background, seven or eight years in outside recruitment. Uh, that's three different disciplines on a desk as a recruiter. Two of them I did as national market, which simply means you never meet anybody, everything over the phone, lots of placements. And then I did one as local market Manhattan, where suddenly I have to meet everybody. <laughs> it's all different. It's like, get out of the office, go meet people. I'm like, but why? I'm so good on the phone. Oh. Well, good lesson when you have to go sell in person. Um, if you can sell over the phone, <laughs> oh my gosh, it's like taking candy from a baby in front of them. I didn't realize how difficult it was for people to say no in person as opposed to over the phone. So once you become very, very good over the phone, in person opens up everything. But I use these two techniques every day as a recruiter. A uh, recruiter wants to do less work and have more outcome, just like a job seeker. So let's look at this first one. This first one helps you build a list, statistically perfect list, of 30 organizations or companies, profit, nonprofit, none of that really matters, that are statistically perfect to hire you statistically perfect. The only unknown is, do they have an opening? And, and so a uh, good recruiter, and there's lots of bad recruiters, but good recruiter will, will meet you. And if you're a stellar individual, stellar candidate, oh, A++, I got to get out and get this person a job. Um, they're going to put together this statistically perfect list. What they're going to do is look in their recruiter database. Well, you have your own database now called LinkedIn. And we're going to do this one back, one forward technique. And we're going to think about some aspect of you, not every aspect of you, some aspect of you. And we're going to go in and search for that and find people that are just like you in some way, shape, or form, not every way, shape, or form, that made one job move forward. By default, they'll have one back, one forward. You know where the title comes from. So if this was a Coca-Cola quality manager and you are now looking for a new opportunity, you, you've left the company looking for a new opportunity, you go in, you search. By the way, I should mention I only use the free version of LinkedIn. You can do all of this on the free version. And with a toggle, I can see everybody that used to work for Coca-Cola and a few keywords, quality manager, everything else. And now I search through the results, begin to collect together all of the people. It's research. It's homework. It's actual work that will make your job search and career moves easier. So, so now I gather all these people together and, and I look at their one backs, one forwards. And if it was all based on my Coca-Cola quality manager, First thing that's going to happen is heartbreak. I'm going to see Coca-Cola, 7-Up, Pepsi-Cola, RC-Cola. John, I could have written that list myself. Well, yes. <laughs> that part of the list you should have written yourself right off the top of your head. And then as you continue to look around, you're going to see all these other food and beverage companies you've never heard of. There's like a million of them. Everyone statistically perfect to hire you because they hired your duplicate. Go and introduce yourself. If they have an opening, get that job. By the way, Recruiter does this. They, they build their list right away. They have their list of 30 companies, and then they do not bother to look at the company websites. They do not bother to look at the job boards. They simply pick up the phone, call 30 managers at 30 companies, and two, three, or four every single time go, oh, I need a person just like this. You do? Tell me about your need. Tell me about the problem. I don't tell them about the homework, the magic trick. Oh, I knew I was in the right place. I let them take the win, and me, I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Two, three, or four out of 30 
is a very good return and it will dramatically open up your job search in a new way. Here's a different technique. This is a one, two, three forward technique. This is if you're say just entering the job market or say you're mid career, like that Coca-Cola quality manager as an example, <clears throat> and you'd like to do something completely different. So the, here's how you do it. Now I have an actual example to show you because this one's more complex. I had a gal call me up from Atlanta. She says, uh, I think I need a career coach. I think I don't have a career. I'm like, Ooh, a little, little harsh. Send me your stuff. Let's take a look. And she's two, three, four years out of school. Well, three, four years out of school, I think it was at the time. <clears throat> and done a little of this, a little of that. Now she's managing a health club. By the way, nothing wrong with managing a health club. Not what she wants to do. I can't find a career. I'm like, how do you find one of these careers? I'm like, I have a couple ideas, brainstorming ideas. That's what these are. So let's let's try this one, two, three, forward technique. I said, so you're 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 just in the job market. No, 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 I've been working three years. I'm like, well, there's nothing here to see. <laughs> you're just in the job market from my perspective. Let me look at what I really see as your asset, which was her education. Now she went to Clark Atlanta University. So I went in and I searched Clark Atlanta University. And she studied mass media. A few key words. I'm searching for people that studied mass media. And through the magic of search, they're all two, three, four years out of school. They had the same asset as you. What did they do with it? We're looking for inspiration. Where they're located is irrelevant. And, and, and so we're like, oh, oh, events, events, events quarter. Oh, like, oh, events at Warner Brothers. Oh, oh I'd love to work, work at events. Oh, so oh, I'd love to be a membership director. Membership. Oh, I'd like to be a recruiter. Recruiter, help people, help people. I said, come back to that one. <laughs> I said, we well, look at Trish up here. And, and so how'd she become this, this membership director for this nonprofit, for this chamber of commerce? And so what do you think her first job was? membership associate and her second job membership manager and we'll all three steps in she's membership director so i my client here over on the right tahita didn't even know what she was looking for i said well it's going to be a nonprofit or foundation there's lots of those around atlanta great i don't know what kind of job member services i don't know what that is well i don't either <laughs> but apparently they're going to love your background let's go sell it and of course she finds herself on her first step of her three-rung journey to a career goal member services at the Georgia Pharmacy Association. Now, I've been telling this story for a while. I have to update it. She's made two more moves up to manager of member services and database and finally up to director of membership operations down a career path she didn't even know existed prior to our discussion. Change perception, change everything, change your product, decide what you want to be, utilize the skills that you have, but you're going to have to have some idea. It's up to you to have an idea. How do I position this product, sell this product, get some shelf space so people can see it. Let's change reality simply by changing perception. Now, talked about this yesterday. A big mistake people make is they they decide that they're, they'll be, I'll make it so easy on myself by being cookie cutter perfect. I'll just be cookie cutter perfect. And and that's 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 a trap because, you know, I'll take number two, number two, I'm going to I'm going to take number two. I'm going to pay you less. No, you don't want less. Okay. I'll take number one, take number five. It doesn't matter to me. I'm paying less. You're all interchangeable. You see the problem there. So you have to somehow achieve that yet still be different, exceptional, special step out of line somehow. And that's what you have to highlight on the resume, highlight on the LinkedIn profile that you have a little bit of that magic dust that maybe somebody else doesn't have. Let me show you a few of the shares that I've put up there that influence other people. Begin to think about what you would be sharing. So I'm in some of these. I'm, I'm not in some of these, but they're all things I'm related to. So here we were doing a Morgan Stanley event. Shared a group shot of that. Uh, posting one of my, my in-person lectures, and I, I you know, shared that. Uh, then I was doing my online boot camp a couple of years ago. Um, that's about to move online permanently, but I was doing a live online boot camp over a couple week session, and somebody captured a photo of that, and I posted that. My dad would love that. I and mean, he was a Catholic deacon. I, I think I saw him in that, <laughs> that pose, talking to people for many, many years. Uh, here I am up at WHCR Voice of Harlem Radio. Uh, I think I've been up there four or five times. Really a lot of fun. Two hours drive time. Of course, my, my coffee made it. My book made it. I didn't make it into that shot. Sharing some of the articles that are over on LinkedIn that will help. All of these things begin to affect perception. Sharing piggybacking really somebody else's content. The the host of the radio show shared all the author's books he had on that month. And suddenly I'm resharing his content, sharing my content, a little bit of piggybacking. Running out the door to another in-person lecture. I can't share the same darn photo all the time. And 
son, I'm looking for a new photo. And, and, and I see this one. Someone had sent me. They were sitting in the front row. This is like 90 minutes in almost right at the end. And, and, and uh, I'm feeling greasy and I'm embarrassed by this ridiculously long email signature I'm showing. And suddenly I get an extraordinary 1,500 views. Don't be afraid to break your brand a little bit. Uh, be a real human being. Uh, I look at this picture and I just go, oh, where's my hair? <laughs> Why is my nose so big? All those things we don't like. Ignore that uh, part and go with the energy you feel. Branding your career. Let's get down to how we're going to expand our LinkedIn and make it really amazing. You see Twitter popping up there because <clears throat> I think you have to work two or three or four different uh, platforms and really try to let your content as much as possible flow across multiple platforms. So I'm a big believer in connecting our LinkedIn to Twitter and everything you share on LinkedIn, you just seamlessly let it flow to Twitter, never having to visit Twitter yourself if you don't want to. A couple more coming here. Now I'm in all of these because I'm a public speaker. I don't expect you to be in most of yours. Most of yours I expect to be about articles you're reading about what's going on in your industry. What are the challenges? What's going on with your competitors? Um, all those types of things. And yes, maybe some industry events that you might go to. And occasionally one or two of you might be nice as well, uh, depending on what kind of a profile or high profile you might have in your different role. Uh, don't be afraid to catch attention. You know, this last shot, I don't like the shot, but yes, it communicates. So, you know, you have to get over your personal bias of what we don't like. As we begin to think about what content should go onto our LinkedIn, everything from our content has to be rediscovered and filtered. So if you didn't watch the resume renovation lecture, you should really watch that one first to understand how you do a deep dive interview that may take 60 or 90 minutes to rediscover all that you forgot or hid away or let slide away or dismissed as irrelevant so many years later. You have to recapture all of that, come up with eight or nine pages of notes and then filter it through a singular question. Of all this information about me, all these great contributions, what rises to the level of being why it'll be one of the best business decisions they make that day if they choose to hire me? That content has to make the cut for LinkedIn. Primarily, it's going to be these type of performance-related comments. How did you affect the company? How did you affect the department? How, did you, how were you a change agent, essentially, in the modern world? Let's get over to LinkedIn. Now... Let's begin with how you look to other people. When you look at other people, which is an important part of job search, I'm a big believer in reversing what job search is all about instead of simply chasing down these darn job postings, half of which are not real. Check out my supercharging your job search lecture. Um, instead of chasing that down like a dog chasing cars down the street, I could simply reverse search any company I'm interested in on LinkedIn. And that's still coming up in this lecture. Rebuild the org chart in reverse, put a little by thought process. And, and really now I can see where my job is and I can go up, up, up the food chain, down, 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 left and right into other departments. I can pick 25 to 30 people that somehow surround that job, that need, that pain point, who would probably see my background as quite valuable to whatever solution they need. And I begin to open up their profiles and look at them and all of that and, and asking them to connect before really zeroing in to target the three, four, five individuals that really would be involved in the discussion. So when you look at other people, how are you look? Well, you look at Brad here up at the top, looks pretty good. Oh, well, let's start at the bottom. Two LinkedIn members that don't care to be looked at. I understand you may on rare occasion want to look at someone privately. Um, you have to get over that for the most part. There's no point to it really. So that's a don't look here. There's nothing to see here. Jonathan here, um, if there's anybody watching today that's a, a founder or owner and you're trying to be hired, we don't hire founders or owners. You need to get out of your own way. You need to change your <laughs> you need to change your 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 verbiage about yourself. Change that to principle. You know, we don't hire founders or owners because they won't listen to us. They have their own ideas. We can't tell them what to do. Principle has all that same responsibility, but we can direct them. They'll follow our advice. So, get out of our own way and change it to principle if necessary. I can also tell you, Jonathan does not work in the fashion or glam industry. So that picture does not work. <laughs> you have to be the embodiment of who you are. Now, Deborah here, uh, I see good energy. 
So why, I don't know why I look at Jonathan. But Deborah, I see good energy, lighting, fashion, interiors. Now, I don't really know what she's doing. Answering the phone, getting the coffee, designing the materials. I, I don't really know. So I'm, I'm, we missed a little bit there. But I see good energy in the photo. Have to be the embodiment. Brad here, corporate affairs and communications, global reputation management, uh, government relations, crisis comes. Oh, look, I can contact that guy. Full disclosure, of course, one of my clients. You have to look and embody the part, just like I said about if I'd shown up here in my running gear, I don't think you'd be listening to me. Your profiles are the world at your window. If you were in retail, it would not be a good idea if you're being retail right now, but if you were in retail, what would you put in that window to get people into your store? What are you going to put in your LinkedIn profile that shows you as interesting or, or something that drives you in addition to what you bring professionally that's going to draw people in? First impressions are everything. So if you're not using a banner, you absolutely have to use a banner. Nope, you don't have to be in the banner. Public speaker, really easy for me to get shots like that. <clears throat> and once you get over the modesty and humility issues that we all face, those are really, really tough. Um, <laughs> obviously, I've gotten over them. But once you get past them and you're free, then you realize you owe it to yourself, your family, everything else to embody what you bring to the table. So that banner could be something about you or it could be something about uh, what your function is. It could be something suggestive to the function that's not literal, uh, all sorts of things, everything that creates a first impression. Remember, the banner should not draw the focus away from your photo. It should add focus to your photo rather than being a distraction. As far as the profile shot itself, now this is a three-quarter shot. I wish I was looking at camera, but uh, full confession, this is simply at a wedding at City Hall, New York City here a few years ago. I, I like the shot so much, I keep my hair cut exactly the same way so I can just keep using the same shot. I'm like, I think I can keep using that shot. <laughs> I won't tell you how old it is. It's a little too old to be using. But as long as I still am recognizable, it seems right. There we go. What you're seeing there is joy over my friends getting married. Photographer never posed us, just kept seamlessly moving and shooting. Somehow, even those hundreds of people around got me isolated against these poles in the background. I'm like, oh, I love it. What you're looking for in your picture is energy, enthusiasm, drive, passion. Above everything else is presence. And we can't tell you what any of that is. We can tell you when we see it, but can't tell you what it is. The other thing for first impression is to make sure your headline, which is really maybe your 240 character resume right below your name, says something meaningful for you. Now, for the most part, we have a wrong idea of this. We, we get emotionally attached because it's right there, top of the profile, right below our name. I get it. I get it. This is not really about your profile, even though that doesn't sound logical. This is about your social media activity. When you say, come back for next week's career evolution lecture, begin to share all the time, everything else, small version of your picture goes with it, your name goes with it, and this headline goes with it. This is not out to the 11,000 people I'm connected to. This is out to the millions of people who have no idea who John Crant is. So what do I say about it? Author and career coach, resume, LinkedIn, career branding guru. Oh, look at that featured speaker at NYPL, Department of Labor, CUNY, many others. Oh, quoted and seen in all these places. Look, I can contact that guy. How are you going to encapsulate everything that's unique and interesting about you, not just your current role? Of course, 500 plus have to have 501 connections or you'll never be 500 plus. You won't be seen as a mover, shaker, finger on the pulse. Even taking the first impression farther, the about section begins with a quote, which I wrote myself. It's a great quote. There it is. Begins to set the stage. Now, let me grab a tissue here real fast. Banner image we told you about. Think about all these things. <coughs> Sorry, boy, sneeze. Make sure your profile image works together with the banner image. Fill in that, you know, uh, uh, marketing message all about you, that little mini version of your resume. And all of this happens through trial and error, trial and error. There's no one way to make it perfect every time. So whether it's the banner or the text, you have to try it, move it, go back again. As you go further down the profile, now here is the about section or the summary section. And it's so large, on my version, it's three screens long. First thing you'll notice is all this white space. The only control we have is the line breaks, essentially, that's it. So, and, and whether to use all cap or not, which doesn't work 
well, in most cases, a little bit of all cap works nicely. And so uh, what I had talked about yesterday in resume renovation is the fact that, of course, we live in a world where no one will read any longer, which is very, very troubling. And yet, if you understand people won't read, you're not going to use sentence structure, except maybe on the quote. These media hits, I could have put them in much more succinctly. But then what? It would have taken an extra second, two or three. There is no extra second, two or three. They see this list, imprints in the brain, they move on. They don't even have to read it all. They see it, imprints in the brain, move on. Then they see the featured speaker piece. And I talk about the two largest ones that New York Public Library and Department of Labor. But then I immediately list eight other speaking organizations. But you notice I didn't put them together in one list because people would have begun to drone out. I had to break them up because I can't let them miss NYC service or Rainbow Push Wall Street Project or Goldman Sachs or Harvard Business School Club of New York City. So I have to group everything so it can just be absorbed. If they have to read it, conclude, intellectualize everything else, it's not going to work well for you. Still more room left as I grab a second tissue. Still more room left, so I put in a few of the topics that I talk about, even put in a whole paragraph out of my book. Sorry. Better with the tissue? Even reference to my full services. Then I begin to attach visual elements to the profile. Now, if you have this activity box and yours is empty, that means you haven't shared anything in the last 90 days. It means you haven't done anything in the last 90 days. They may even wonder if you're... Did you get hit by the bus? Always need a tissue the moment you start using one. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I had a client not that long ago that had, had come back to me after a few years. And they're like, oh, something's wrong with my digital presence. I'm like, well, well what? It's all, I'm not getting any reaction. I'm like, well, let, I built it. I know it's pretty good. And I know your background. Let's go take a look. And their box is empty. I said, oh, my gosh, Robert, we don't know whether you passed away. And nobody memorialized your profile. It looks like you haven't done anything. You're not living and breathing your profession. This is how we let them look over our shoulder, see what we're reading, doing, sharing, attending, which we talk about in next week's career evolution lecture. Very quickly, you can get four or five shares to fill up your box to showcase that, yes, I am actually thinking about my profession. I'm involved. I'm passionate about it. Then we get down to the resume portion of the LinkedIn profile, but this doesn't look like a resume. Are those things very effective for most people? No. So why would you want it to look like a resume, which doesn't work? So what you need to learn here is how I utilize space to tell story. The key here is removing all sentence structure, grouping and parsing out the information in ways that you'd like them to absorb, and then make each thing stand alone. Even as you go down, you realize without sentence structure, as you look at this, every piece is so easily absorbable without all of the sentence structure. Once it's all done, I go back and I give it just a little tiny bit of all cap, not very much all cap, or they're not going to read much at all. No all cap, probably not going to read much at all. A little bit, which gives framework. Here's some look at what traditional two-line bullets might look like. And then afterward, this is the self-recruiter listing, first listing. Afterward, look, I skip a few spaces and I add a keyword block. Now, most people do not need a keyword block. There's no point in putting in a keyword block if you don't need one. If you need one, this is how you do it. There's no special spot. I would say don't put it in the about section. Don't put it in the summary section because the whole point of a keyword block is don't look here. This is for the machine, <laughs> not for human beings. So I skip a few spaces. I put keyword colon, run all this stuff together. Now you've had time to look at this while I'm speaking. Did you see Stephen Covey, Tony Robbins, Anthony Robbins? Never quite know how they're going to search him. Tori Johnson, 5 O'Clock Club, 92nd Street. Why? All these things have absolutely nothing to do with. What are they doing here? <laughs> Those are things you could search to find a person like John. John thinks like a detective, a little bit of a Sherlock Holmes. You're not going to find John if he can't get that into his story. I can't get it into my story organically, but I can get it into a keyword block. Now, let's connect those dots for you. Do you need to come up right next to someone in your industry that pulls a lot of spotlight. My gosh, this is a very interesting way to do it. You need to be always seen by certain companies you're dying to work for. Very interesting way to do it. All of this for each of the sections, though, requires trial and error. Even for myself, I probably spend three, four hours building out clients' LinkedIn profiles. This is in addition to all the conversation, everything that led up to that, that actual build out. 
understand that it takes effort and re-effort and analysis and sharpening. Then you begin to add your visuals to your different jobs. Every job listing can take visuals, you know, get those things in there to help you. Makes your career come alive compared to the others that have no visuals. Now, uh, a little bit further down here on VP over the 100 office recruiting system. And uh, now this would be a terrible technique to use on your resume. In my view, on a resume, you have a single sheet of paper. Don't waste that real estate blowing nice smoke at your company. But over here, I could tell more descriptive things about my company saying, oh, it was a national recruiting firm, 100 plus offices. We did manufacturing, engineering, supply chain, logistics, chemical, energy. But you know what that is? That's just a clever way to get more keywords in there. Now, if you think about my storytelling technique, if you were in any one of those industries and you need help with your resume or help with your LinkedIn profile or help on your next job interview, guess who would come right up based on how I wrote my profile? So if this technique can help you, this is how you use it. This is a variation on that same technique. This is a little further down in my profile. This is back when I was on the manager level in recruiting and uh, also recruiter as well as well as being a recruiting manager. And so I put my associated clients. Now, that could get you in trouble. Uh, careful of your non-disclosures, careful of your trade secret agreements. I had the right to share every one of my clients. I shared every single software client I worked with. And you can imagine if you worked at any one of these software companies and you needed help on your resume or help on your LinkedIn profile or help coaching you through your next interview process, you can imagine who might come right up based on how I wrote this. So think about what you might put in here. Now, just below that, and you can copy and paste this right out of my own profile. By the way, don't be shy about visiting my own profile, looking at all of this in a more holistic way and borrowing the structure. Yes, you have to change the content. You can copy and paste the structure out to help yours get better and better. You can copy this piece out, invite me, all invites accepted, open networker and lion. If they don't know what that means, they go, oh, I don't know what that is. They'll move right on. No negative effect. Then, oh, high volume networker has no negative effect and they move right on. If you'd like endless new connections forever, place this anywhere within your profile so it's searchable. Publications module, of course, I have my book in there and, and a lot of different articles and, and featured in Essence Magazine, all that there. But if you don't have any of those things, you could still, well, if you could write three, four, five short articles, this is page, page and a half, no one wants to read, articles that somehow surround what you do professionally, almost from a wise mentoring like, could you talk to my kid? <laughs> They'd like to come down the kind of track that you're on. Uh, could you give them some pearls of wisdom and some advice? Yeah, that's the wise mentoring tone to have. You share three, four, five articles that somehow surround what you do. That is like controlling every word of the interview in advance. Those are all sell aspects for why you over the other person. You can put them on a free blog, never having to visit or blog again. Put them on your profile with the publications module. It has a big effect. Now, if you volunteer, you notice this doesn't say volunteer, it says organizations. For myself, nor my clients, I don't use the volunteer module. It might as well say, don't look here. We're so dismissive. We're so interested. Oh, it's volunteer. It's not real. It's not real. You know what today is? Volunteering. <laughs> there's no cost. There's no charge. There's no revenue on this piece of it. So this is volunteering. And I guarantee you, this is real work. Um, you know, so everything that falls into that whether it's it's work, work, or good works goes on to the organization's module. Now, I'm a public speaker, so you'll see lots of dates here, but there's no dates required here, and good works do not expire. If you did something for Habitat for Humanity in 2004, it better be here. Just leave off that 2004, and everyone's going to want to talk about, oh, my gosh, tell me, tell me about Habitat for Humanity. <laughs> you know, that was so interesting. You know, that was back in 2004 when I blah, 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 and just tell the story. Another variation on that same technique was doing an event, got invited to an event at NYU Wasserman Center. And uh, they were going to have a, a career counseling you know, session, everything else, and then, and then a couple different speakers and a roundtable. And, and so I'm prepping for all of this. And I realized that uh, one of the people, John Levinsky, had all of these followers, more followers than me. I'm like, oh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> and yet shy and introverted, but I want to win. <laughs> Um, but I'm thinking differently. I'm not thinking about John has more than me. 
I'm thinking, how do I get John's connections? Because I already have my connections. <laughs> and so this is how you learn to share little spotlights. So anytime someone searches Jessica or John or Vincent or, or NYU Washington Center, guess who comes right up? So understand how to share the spotlight and understand that moonlight will reflect some of that value back upon you. Keyword skills endorsement module, 50 words or phrases all about you. You have to put in 50. If you don't put in 50, other people will start putting in the words for you. And that is not how you control your career brand. Let's add some clarity here. No one is an expert at 50 items. That's not the criteria. I've touched this camera. There we go. Touch it without touching it. I don't want a fingerprint. If I've touched the camera, let's see if we can get the autofocus back now. <laughs> there we go. If I've touched the camera, uh, camera's on the list. Gosh, that's a very low threshold, John. It is. I have exposure to camera. Camera's on the list. So some of these things, absolutely, uh, you're going to be an expert at. And some of these things, you just have exposure. You have to understand on the back end, someone dialing this up like a recipe. Give me someone that has this, this, and maybe exposure to that. And you understand why they all have to be filled in. Get as many votes as you can, but don't move them around yourself. Let it auto sort all the time. You can get some friends to spike those votes to get them moving forward to you. Everything gets recollected at the bottom of your profile in a very different way. Um, all of that information that is down there gets can be expanded. So you can put in as much as you'd like. LinkedIn will contract it. All of it is searchable. So yes, you may put in the detail, everything else. Written recommendations, perfect world. You should have four, five, or six. I think I have 52, 53, 54, something like that. Not a single edit, which you'll know the moment you start reading them because your head's going to want to explode. <laughs> it's like typos all over the place, grammar all over the place. Oh my gosh, didn't John see this? Of course I did. That's why it works, actually. That's what I learned as a recruiter. Don't change people's organic essence. Much more valuable for you. Join the right groups. When you join a group, it's just like you're instantly in your searchable pool. If you're not in a very large number of groups with a lot of people in each group, you're really missing opportunity. So join as many groups as possible for the right fields for you or for the new fields for you or the new function for you or the expertise you'd like to show. Of course, I think you should look at self-recruiter group too. That's a pretty good group. Follow some influencers. Look at that. I'm following Tony Robbins, mostly so I can see if I can get behind him on stage, give him a little push, get a little long in the tooth. Got to make some room for the rest of us. Get yourself to 500 plus connections. You have to be seen as a mover and shaker, finger on the pulse. Oh my gosh, this person must have all the resources that I need. Maybe they're the ones I should hire. They seem to know almost everyone. Let's do a little bit of searching here, how we're going to expand. You just go up here and just like you saw on my profile, you just take invite me, all invites accepted, open networker and lion all one at a time. Even on the free version, they're going to give you 10 or more pages of people. You just run down and you connect to as many people as you can. None of it matters. Connect, connect, connect. And just don't wait for the answer because it's all irrelevant. As far as expanding, take that first step and do as much as you can. Now, I want to talk to you just a little bit here in the few minutes left of how we create a job search plan on LinkedIn. And that means upending the entire process. Rather than searching for job postings, I'm going to start with the companies or organizations I'm dying to work for, dying to work for. 30 of them, if you'd like the right results. Not 30 is a lot, 30 is a lot. But you can come up with 10, I bet. And once you come up with 10 that you're dying to work for, I bet you, if you look at all their competitors, oh, you can easily expand that to 30 very, very quickly because most of the reasons you might be attracted to those brands probably apply to some of their competitors. Very easily get up to 30, change your odds. Then you simply work backward like a detective. How do I align that sun, the moon, the stars? Discover the decision makers, which I'm about to show you how to do right now. Next, overcome the objections because that's their job is to object to you. That shouldn't throw you. The objection is simply to give you a platform so you can persuade me how brilliant you are. Get amazing, dazzle them, have them either give you the job or create the job. Now, how do we get to those decision makers or whoever we're after? The boss is boss, boss is boss is boss, peer subordinates, anybody else? We go to this unified search box on LinkedIn, same on every page. I'm going to put in, say, say company I'd like to find is Informatica. That's the company I'm going to target. Used to be one of my big cash cows, by the way, as a recruiter. So I get this drop down menu, but that's a trip down the rabbit hole. Don't, don't do that. Just click enter and you get this nice secondary sorting process. 
And as long as I'm here, I do want to look at the other companies I should be aware of. So where'd they hide that? Oh, just down the drop down, they hit it right there. Companies, 34,000 companies. Wow, that's a lot of companies. Well, after you get past all the ones with Informatica in the name, who are the rest of these? Well, I can tell you. <laughs> this used to be my field. They're all system integrators. They either resell or install Informatica software. If I am statistically right to work for Informatica, I am very likely statistically right to work for a great number of these folks. But now I really have to find the people. So I go back and go, okay, but 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 show me the people. What do I get? 2.5 million. <laughs> Cold and in the ground before I get through that list, uh, especially on my free version. Let's see. I'm going to have to put my thinking cap on. Um, maybe, maybe give me the ones in the U.S. I don't need them all over the place. Really in the U.S. And now that I'm thinking about it because it's brainstorming. Give me the ones that are currently working for Informatica, not like three years ago working for Informatica, all toggle choices on even the free version. 1,615 results, making progress, making progress. But I, 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 I can't look at 1,600 people either. A little more thinking cap because it's brainstorming. I think it's a VP that's going to hire me. Really US, really Informatica. What do I get? 75 VPs. I got a lot of chiefs in that company. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe it's a director. Director, really U.S., really Informatica. You know, 228 directors. I'm going the wrong direction. Oh, I've got it. I've got it because it's brainstorming. I have to problem solve. It's a sales director I'm looking for. And, and you know what? Even on the free version, now I can go right down to New York City. Why wasn't I thinking that earlier? Really Informatica. Three. Remember, I was going to start by looking for 25 to 30 people. I should have already collected those in this whole process. And now I'm also narrowing down to the three to five people that I want to reach out to directly. Rest of the process, besides opening their profiles, I certainly would have asked them to connect. Basic message that says, you don't know me. I'm professionally appropriate. Little stroke to their ego. Sounds like I like to connect with other professionals in our niche or niche. And of course, I'd love to add to my professional network on LinkedIn. But if I get to five people, not just three, I'm going to have a much better result. Maybe there's a sales VP also, and, and same location, voila, two more. Now I have five people. Uh, but problem here is, is still you're going to run into some folks that say, oh, send in mail. Please don't send in mail, at least from my perspective. In mail is the literal definition of spam. It is paid email. My inbox is full of well, 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 over a thousand unopened nonsense messages, all endless spam I'm getting through InMail. So please don't send someone an InMail. We're going to send these people an email, not brain surgery to get anybody's email these days. I still want to connect to Nick and they're sending me this darn send InMail. But if I just was smart enough to load the profile and go under the dot, 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 they just hit the connect button. Put it over here. They'll never find it. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's right there. That's their core function. They can't hide that from you. I like to connect with other professionals and I send it off and then I don't wait for an answer because the answer is irrelevant. This is a sales process. These forms and things that can help you in your job search process, you can download right on the self recruiter website under the advice tab. And what you're looking for is the job search management system, all free. You can just download it, capture that information. You need to take your first step and you begin to reach out to these people. As you do reach out to those three, four, five decision makers, what does it sound like? Dear Jack, Dear Jim, dear Jill, I just had to reach out and introduce myself to you. I'm so excited by what I see going on at XYZ Company. By the way, I saw that Wall Street Journal article on your new such and such launch. Oh, those things are always so good to get. You know, back when I was with ABC Company, oh, I handled a very similar launch. You just have to have a carrot to get a meeting. You know, I'd love to come in and share with you how we tackled all those issues I bet your team's experiencing. Then you have to be brave enough to go for the jugular. I have an opening on my calendar, my calendar. Words are very important. Tuesday at 10 a.m., that's one day, one time, never more, or I'm never going to meet with you. If you're open all next week, you are not valuable. <laughs> reach out to those folks and engage them. If you reach out to five people, two or three conversations are very likely to happen. Part two is next week called Career Evolution. Once you've built out that wonderful uh, story of your whole background and who you are, how do you now energize that to use that as a marketing machine for yourself to put yourself in front of people? That's Career Evolution coming next week. The whole uh, uh, series, you can you can check out the dates over on my self record website tomorrow at 10 a.m. That's 7 a.m. on the West Coast, or you can watch it on replay. I'll be presenting interview intervention. This is all the secrets to really teach them 
how to select you as the very best individual for this. Of course, post-pandemic world, we have to shift. Here's one last look at the entire series in case you need to know which dates are which. Please do wherever you're watching, whether it's LinkedIn or YouTube, or maybe you're over on my Facebook. I hope you like, comment, share, message, share it with your friends, all that kind of fun stuff. And if you need help resetting your career brand or elevating your career brand across resume, LinkedIn, even those in-person discussions, check out all my services on the self recruiter website under the services tab. And if you need to chat before you know which package may be the right one for you, send me a quick email and we will talk. Thank you guys for tuning in. See you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Take care. Have a great rest of your day.